Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm Krish Mohan. So before we dive into this week's episode, I just want to let you guys know that if you would like to support the show, DIY Socially Conscious Comedy, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a monthly patron for only $2 a month. All right, let's dive right into this week's episode. The point of technological progress is to help humanity. Each invention we've come up with has made a hard task a little bit easier. Forks made it easier for us to eat our potatoes. Cars made it easier for us to get late night snacks when we got high. And let's be honest, the horse probably appreciated that too. Every time an old-timey stoner would need to go get something from the grocer, the horses would have to be woken up, and then the grocer would have to be woken up just to get some old-timey chips and dip. Just as technological progress helps people, the flip side is how can it benefit those that are hungry for power? Their drug isn't old-timey weed, but old-timey tricks to control citizens using new-timey tools. The internet is one such tool. The internet's potential for educating a populace, connecting worldviews, and watching anime music videos and porn is limitless. In the last month, Corporate media has caught up to what independent media has been warning us about for a year. The use of Facebook to psychologically control our choice to vote. And that was what the Cambridge Analytica debacle was all about. Old-timey tricks using new-timey tools. So, what the hell happened with Cambridge Analytica? This was started by Cambridge professor Alex Kogan, who was interested in data science. His app, GSR, used a personality quiz to collect personal data from Facebook. Dr. Alexander Kogan. His research involved analyzing Facebook profiles, and he's held a position as associate professor at St. Petersburg State University. Thousands of Facebook users were paid to download an app and fill out a personality survey through Kogan's company, GSR. The data was shared with Cambridge Analytica. Kogan oversaw this separately from his role at Cambridge University and St. Petersburg University. Finally, BuzzFeed quizzes have a purpose, albeit a nefarious one of collecting quantitative information about your personality, emotions, and general humanity, but BuzzFeed can finally sit at the top of the corporate journalistic throne with CNN, Fox News, and MSNBC for manipulating human beings under the guise of being news. I, I, am, I am sure that somebody is really proud of you, BuzzFeed. Now, Facebook allowed for this data mining because it was only going to be used for academic purposes and to feed the itch that human beings have for mining things. You know, with how dangerous coal mining is, not just for humans, but also the planet, we decided to steer away from that. And now we're mining data in the abstracted digital landscape we created hollowing out those series of tubes for their pixelated gold. Unfortunately, Kogan shared his data with Cambridge Analytica. As was pointed out by whistleblower and former data analyst Christopher Wiley, they thought this data was fair game to use for commercial means. Former Cambridge Analytica research director Chris Wiley said the data grab harvested 50 million Facebook records. This allowed it to move into the hearts and minds of American voters. Facebook said that the data should have only been used for academic purposes and shouldn't have been passed to Cambridge Analytica. But Kogan claims he had the right to use the data commercially. Cambridge Analytica, Kogan, and Wiley have been suspended from Facebook while it investigates. Which means a British company did something absolutely American. Assume something 
that wasn't really yours was yours and used for commercial and profitable gains. I feel like this is UK finally accepting the loss of the revolution and this way they're getting their comeuppance. Cambridge Analytica was funded by Robert Mercer, the billionaire who funded the Trump campaign and his daughter Rebecca served on the board. And Steve Bannon, Trump's former chief strategist, was the vice president of this company at one time. Cambridge Analytica was funded by Republican billionaire Robert Mercer and his daughter Rebecca served on the board. Steve Bannon is a former vice president of the company, which was hired by the Trump campaign. Bannon went on to become the chief executive of the campaign and later became a key advisor in Trump's White House. The most senior Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee wants Wiley's claims investigated. As Robert Mueller continues his probe into alleged Russian interference in the 2016 election. With that information, Cambridge Analytica was realistically not built just to help Trump win the election, but also to help him figure out what the internet was and how to actually use Twitter. They failed on half their purposes, but the other half, that, that, that other half went pretty swimmingly. And this is why Luddites exist, right? It's why people are still saying the internet is a fad, because power uses technological advances in adverse ways. So they figure they'll just run it dry and move on to the next thing. If technology isn't meant to progress and advance the lives of people, then you know, we should probably just put it in the back burner. But that's what we should really be doing with technology, is bettering ourselves and our lives. The way Cambridge Analytica used it was for control and fear. Old-timey tricks with new-timey tools. That's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up uh, on Facebook or YouTube uh, and give it a share. Uh, sharing is a great way to help this show. It reaches uh, new audiences that way uh, and uh, you get to share it with some friends. You get to share it with some enemies. Anybody that you feel like would enjoy uh, content like this or benefit from from a, a video like this and uh, a great way another great way to really help the show is by becoming a patron uh, you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohan haha where you can find all the details about what you're supporting uh, about this show uh, i am the only employee of this show and it takes a very long time to make an episode uh, from doing all the research, all the writing, all the editing, uh, all the video filming, it's a uh, it's a multi-person job done by one person. So if you can if you can and are able to financially contribute to that, that's awesome. Uh, it all starts at only two dollars a month. Go to Patreon.com/slash Krishmohan Haha. I've got live stand-up comedy shows coming up. In San Antonio, Texas, Austin, Texas, Denton, Texas. We are also coming to Phoenix, Arizona, San Diego, California, San Francisco, California, and Los Angeles. For the entire tour schedule, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. While you're there, uh, you can check out all of my stand-up comedy albums along with my tour dates. Uh, you can download them uh, via any of your favorite music download and streaming services. It's available on iTunes, Pandora, Spotify, Google Play. But the best place, I think, to download uh, DIY artists is on Bandcamp. Uh, and you can check out all my albums on my Bandcamp at ramennoodlescomedy.com dot bandcamp dot com that's r a m a n noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com uh you and you can subscribe to my bandcamp and when you do you get exclusive stand-up comedy and storytelling material each and every month for only five dollars a month uh which is not that expensive and it helps the show 
and you get a bunch of cool fucking stand-up content. That's awesome. So you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, and like I said, a really great way to help this show is by becoming a monthly patron by going to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Starting at only $2 a month, that is one cup of coffee, guys. If you can give up one cup of coffee, you can help support this show. Uh, go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. You get to see uh, how and why you should support this show. You get to build a community and talk directly to me without any sort of censorship by any other social media platform. Um, and uh, you get to help help me get to, to more cities, my favorite cities and your favorite cities more often. Uh, so go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, I'm also on Steemit. I'm also on Minds. Uh, I'm all over the goddamn place. There's a lot of shit you can follow me on. <laughs> uh, but I truly, truly, truly appreciate you guys uh, liking this stuff, watching this stuff, sharing this stuff. Keep doing that. Tell more people about it uh, because that's how you help independent media grow. Uh, if you can't contribute monthly, there's also an option for a one-time donation. Check out the description and the video below. Uh, and uh, and I hope to see you guys at a live show. It's always fun to, to meet you guys out on the road. Uh, well, I'm super excited to come all over the country and see you guys. So uh, that's, uh, that's your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for getting into it, and we'll see you on the road.